Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here to talk about tonight's uh, slate, DFS slate, August 18th. Um, it's a two-game slate. Um, sorry about not uploading videos the past several days. I was out of town traveling for work. Um, but yeah, so we have a two-game slate, basically. Um, one in China, one in Korea. As mentioned, it's a playoff matchup, so it's going to be a best of five series. Um, and just one thing to note about the format, uh, best of five format, is that um, I'd say like a good nugget for DFS purposes is that it's more imperative than ever to base your analysis on the statistics and metrics because you know in a best of five series, just like in the NBA where it's best of seven, a better team tends to win more than probably 90% of the times, you know, it, when it's a best of one, best of one or best of three. Yeah. I mean, a team can show up that day and win, uh, have a game script that can flip the game on its head and win the game that way, you know, in LEC and LCS, you've seen those matchups where, yeah, things can, I mean, you know, people have a letdown matchup, but in a best of five where um, those mistakes can be mitigated, you know, throughout the series and a better team tends to, you know, win most of the times, like I said, the statistics and the match, uh, the metrics, you know, matter more than ever. So that's kind of where I lean toward, like it's a more data heavy analysis um, when it comes to the playoff time. Um, and that's worked out really well for us, uh, for those Patreon subscribers and also, you know, people on our true DFS discord, you know, I've, I've gotten the three predictions correctly, including the FPX upset. So hopefully we continue that tonight. Um, but let's dive in two games late. Like I said, one game in China tonight, uh, FPX versus EDG. As you guys know, um, FPX has just is coming off of a win uh, in their last series in the first playoff round matchup. Um, they looked okay. I mean, I think they looked good at times, but they looked pretty bad at times as well. Frankly, I think they were very lucky in Game Three to come out, come out as a you know with the win. Um, but in my opinion, EDG has played so so much better. Uh, in the last two, three weeks after they have um, started Junja at jungle. Um, I know there's a, some sort of like substitution risk there with JJ uh, on the bench and can come in for Junja. But I think when that happened, that one game um, was an exception where they were just trying out different combinations throughout the series where I fully expect Junja to start and finish the series uh, for EDG, as long as they win game one, I think they'll be fine. Maybe when they get if they lose game one, uh, they'll probably get desperate. Even if they let's say if they lose game two, I mean, they'll they'll get real desperate because, um, hear me out. Like you hear EDG has not did not finish well in the spring split. Um, in the summer split, like I uh, as mentioned, um, before that EDG, um does not have a guaranteed spot in the world's tournament this year. As you guys know, they won the worlds last year um, with the same roster, except for Junja at jungle, but EDG, you know, they won the worlds last year and they, now uh, they really need to pick up a lot of wins in the summer split. Really. They need to do well here in the summer split to be able to have a chance to make it to the world's make it back to the worlds this year. So EDG is motivated. And like I said, EDG has been playing much, much better with Junja at jungle. Junja at jungle has unlocked a lot of the, not, I, I wouldn't say potential, but just like a big, you know, game plays for scout and Viper, especially in the bottom lane, Viper and Mako have been really, really good with Junja at jungle. Um, I think they definitely have an advantage over LWX and hang. I still think Viper is one of the best 80 carries in the LPL. So I think that is a an advantage for EDG. And then in the mid lane, Care, I th actually think Care played really well in the last series two days ago. Um, but, you know, when he does not play a, an assassin champion in the game, 
he is just a mediocre mid laner, um, whereas Scout is more versatile and he can play a variety of champions and he can mitigate um, those assassin champions, um, you know, on the other team. So I do think that's more of a wash. Like I said, Care has been the best player, in my opinion, for FPX. Um, their bot, whereas that their bottom lane has struggled. Um, but I do think Scout will do okay there. Um, and then maybe in jungle, like Clint, I mean, he definitely has the potential to pop off um, over Jinja. But Jinja has been playing really well, like I said. Um, and then in the top lane, I, I prefer Flandre. Summit is a good team fighting player and decent uh, decent laning phase player. But um, I think Flandre, I have to favor Flandre. And the way that EDG has been playing lately, I just do not see a lot of winning paths for e FPX. So um, my my match prediction is EDG winning three to one. I think Viper and Mako will do really really well, and they will definitely be a part of my prize picks pool. Uh, speaking of prize picks, if you are interested in the exact match predictions and core plays and the uh, prop bets for prize picks, come check out my Patreon um and my Twitter handle. Um, but yeah, so I think EDG is going to win 3 to 1 over FPX. And I think I would focus on the bottom lane to do well tonight. Um, and then in the LCK, it's more of a toss up matchup between Damon Kia and KT Rolster. Now, Damon Kia has struggled a lot. So uh, KT, I'd say KT is definitely a better team or in better form. Uh, lately, coming into the playoffs, um, Damon Kia has struggled and has shown that they're not the same Damon Kia they were once before. Um, so really, KT is led by aiming at AD Carry and Rascal in the top lane. And Vikla, after he subbed in for Arya throughout the summer split, he's actually showed up and played really well. Um, whereas Damon Kia, I mean, you know, they have Canyon at jungle and Showmaker in the mid lane. I'd say those ha those are the two players that have been, you know, pretty good um, so far in the summer split. But everybody else on their team, Nuguri, Duckdom, and Kellen, have been pretty bad, in my opinion. And their team fights have not been the best. Um, I think KT has definitely, uh, you know, better team fighting team. Um, over Damon Kia, um, but Damon Kia has a better jungler and better mid laner. So really, I mean, just like the odds indicate, you know, from Vegas that it is a toss up. So I would definitely have exposure to both teams. Um, but if I have to guess what to come up with the match prediction, I'm going to have to go with KT in five. I think KT is going to win three to two. And I think aiming and rascal will be the difference makers in my opinion. So. But as you know, Damon Kia likes to play slow. Um, KT likes to play on the slower side, a little bit faster than Damon Kia. So I would definitely target this uh, LP LPL matchup as the long stack for DFS purposes. Um, like I said, I like EDG a lot tonight um, to win. And then I would have exposure to Damon Kia or KT. But I do think KT is going to end up taking the series and advance to the next round where... Genji is going to get to choose either Sandbox or the winner of the Dawan Kia KT matchup. They're basically going to get the lower seed or whatever the team that they want to play to play against in the next round. And then, yeah, so we'll see what happens there. But if you guys have any questions or just want to chat League of Legends, DFS, prize picks, whatever you want to talk about game wise, I'm, I'm here for you. Um, you can reach out to me at DFS Chan. This video was, has been sponsored by, by True DFS. So please, please hit the like button below. That would mean a lot to, to me and, um, and the group. Um, yeah, good luck out there. I hope to see you at the top of the leaderboard. Have a good one. Bye-bye.